Haiti has unveiled the first draft of its grand reconstruction plan, saying more than $12 billion is needed to help the country rebuild after January's devastating earthquake. But foreign engineers in Haiti say lessons about construction haven't been learned. And the shoddy repair work they've seen over the past two months will only lead to more deaths in the event of another quake. As Craig McMurtry reports, there's growing criticism of the Haitian government over the pace of recovery and reconstruction. Now, we're as far away... They work from the back of a local tap-tap. Sean Anderson and Craig Totten are structural engineers from the United States. Locals in the earthquake-hit town of Jacques Mel have picked some buildings they want them to check, but there simply isn't time to do them all. It looks like the wall was swaying. It was called out-of-plane movement. Craig Totten says around half of those he's seen so far can be saved. It's overwhelming in terms of just... Uh, the, the challenge that they have ahead of them to, I mean, to clear the debris and to, to rebuild. What's holding that up? <laughs> what is holding it up? Their reports go to the United Nations. The Haitian government has a separate certifying system using local engineers. To their frustration, they say no one's tagging buildings after the inspections. And Craig Totten says two months after the earthquake, already shoddy buildings are now getting shoddy repairs. So you see some really bad repairs going on right now where people are just stuck going over cracks and, and uh, calling the building good. So much of the construction is just, it's just guys building their own structures or, you know, there's, there's no engineering to it. There's no inspection. There's no quality control. I can tell you those information are going to go straight into a drawer, which will never be open again. Outspoken Haitian because politician Stephen Benoit says the work of the foreign engineers will be ignored. He's highly critical of the Praval government. Yeah, unfortunately, there is no plan. It's been, yesterday has been two months since the earthquake, and the president has yet to talk. The prime minister hasn't talked. Thousands of Haitians are being employed in cash for work schemes, clearing the rubble from the streets of Port-au-Prince. But it's painfully slow. And president Praval's three-year timetable to clear the debris has been met with disbelief in the camps. We cannot even wait for one month, not to speak of, of three years. I can't understand that. Owners of some houses have started to reconstruct their own building. Because Haiti is going to be Haiti again, like it was before. Clearing busy streets like this of all the rubble is a mammoth task in its own right, but another is finding temporary housing for the hundreds of thousands of Haitian families whose homes were destroyed in the earthquake. To that end, the Red Cross says by the end of the month, within two weeks, it will have enough building materials for a thousand structures, a thousand small wooden homes. The problem is, it's bogged down in bureaucracy and long negotiations with the Haitian government, and right now doesn't have any land to put them on. Stephen Benoit says without an effective land title system, Finding somewhere for aid groups to build on is nigh on impossible. You have no records of who owns what, and this is why you have those shanty towns all over circling port au prince where anybody finds a piece of land, at night they go in with two pieces of cardboard and two pieces of wood, and they start building a house. In a convention centre far above the chaos of the streets of the Haitian capital, 200 economists, engineers, academics and public servants are working on a long-term plan for Haiti to present to a UN donors conference at the end of the month. Experienced disaster recovery specialist Dukla Wingler says some sort of land redistribution will be needed. A lot of these buildings are privately owned, so it's basically the owner who, who would have to uh, look for a solution and I'm sure that many of them are, are not mentally uh, or maybe financially ready to do so. The donor countries will also be told that they have to commit to Haiti for another three years and that they need to invest in agriculture to generate jobs outside the crowded capital. Australian World Bank economist Tim Bullman is one of those working on the economic plan for Haiti. The impact of the losses is dramatic, but then the reconstruction from a GDP perspective can offset a lot of those losses. The difficulty is that the people who are going to be damaged by the disaster are not necessarily those people who are going to benefit first from the reconstruction. So, for example, 
Reconstruction tends to employ men. It tends to pay relatively low wages. With the construction plan still being worked on, foreign engineers and masons are taking matters into their own hands. This type of construction is called confined masonry. By teaching a technique developed in South America, used widely in Chile, where the death toll from a stronger earthquake was much less. It involves a particular order of construction, building masonry walls, then reinforced columns before adding the slab to lock it together. This local engineer says things will change. But his teachers aren't so confident. It's only been two months since the earthquake tore the country apart, killing an estimated 230,000 people. And they're seeing construction workers plastering over cracks, cutting back on cement to save money, and the same mistakes being made all over again. Craig McMurtry, Lakeline.